Welcome everyone to an ODQ and a video right here on ODQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and ODQ and a videos affiliate ringsidenews.com. We are now just one week away until WWE Night of Champions. Got your questions here regarding Night of Champions and other topics. Let's get started with the first one today from Ariel. Do you think that Kevin Owens will ever get a push to be WWE Champion? Anything's possible. As they say in WWE, never say never. Anything can happen in world wrestling entertainment. Now with that being said, I think that the odds are against it happening. Kevin Owens, as we all know, does not fit the mold of a top tier WWE superstar, a main event larger than life character such as a John Cena or a Hulk Hogan. Kevin Owens, he's different from that mold. Now, that does not guarantee he will never be WWE Champion. We've seen stranger things happen in the past. Mick Foley was WWE Champion. Daniel Bryan was WWE Champion. Chris Benoit was WWE Champion. It can happen, and if it does happen, it will be because of Kevin Owens' ability in the ring and his promo skills. It will not be because of his physique. Let's put it that way. There are things working against him, but if he continues to do well in WWE, continues to have memorable matches and feuds, I would not rule it out. I think that it could very well happen at some point down the line. Will he be the face of the company, the guy that the company is built around? No, I don't expect that to happen, but one day I could see him getting a run as WWE Champion. I, I think that it is definitely in the realm of possibility. And I got this one here from Harsh. Hey Aaron, are you disappointed with the Cesaro and Kevin Owens feud? I would end their feud in a 30 minute Iron Man match at Night of Champions for the US title. Well, that's not going to happen, but there is the possibility of Kevin Owens becoming the IC champion by defeating Ryback at Night of Champions. That I could see happening and I would go with that. I would go with Kevin Owens as IC champion for the time being. Clearly, he's not going to be in the main event picture. You have John Cena, you have Seth Rollins, you have Sting, and who, who knows what other people will get involved in the mix. But right now, I think it's best to let Kevin Owens win the IC title and make it the workhorse championship again, just like it was back in the 90s with guys like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Let him go out there and have show-stealing matches with people like Cesaro. That is what I would do with the IC title. That is the direction I would go with that title right now. Hell, throw Ryback in with John Cena again or whatever. Just uh, make the IC title prestigious again and let Kevin Owens go out there and have great matches with people. I think that that would be the best way to not only elevate the title, but to elevate Kevin Owens and uh, make him a, a credible challenger for the WWE title one day. A guy who brought the IC title back to the forefront and made it a pre prestigious title again. Alright, this one comes from Scene Tate. Hey Aaron, what did you think of Ultima Lucha and do you think that Lucha Underground will get a second season? I am really hoping they get a second season, but there hasn't been a lot of news regarding that and to me that's not a good sign. The Ultima Lucha show was tremendous. I, I thought it was amazing. I loved the uh, Johnny Mundo versus Alberto El Patron match and uh, with Melina making her return and then that um, that Vampiro match that was just violent as hell and uh, you know that's something totally different from what we see in the PG world of WWE I mean with the uh, the light bulb tubes and, and all the violence and blood um, you know that that show had, had something for everybody you had the Lucha Libre you had the hardcore wrestling um, it, it's a good variety show and it, it, it's something different from WWE the whole vibe and atmosphere the temple you know I, I like it I like the fact that they're doing something different from what WWE is doing and that that is really what you need to do in order to be legitimate competition if you just try to blatantly copy WWE it's not going to work I do feel there are some issues with Lucha Underground. I think they do overproduce things a little bit. Uh, too many quick camera cuts and, uh, you know, the backstage soap opera segments. Uh, the acting could be better. Uh, the editing could be better. But, 
Um, overall, I, I like the presentation of the product, and I hope that they do bring it back for a second season. But uh, at this point, nothing's a guarantee. But definitely keeping my fingers crossed because it is a nice alternative to WWE. Alright, this one comes from Daniel Westerman. Hey Aaron, could AJ Styles have one off match in NXT similar to Jushin Liger, and who would you like to see him face? He could do that, but the thing is, if AJ Styles showed up in a WWE ring, there would be demand for him to be a regular on the roster. Fans would would get their hopes up that he would become a regular on television. So you give the fans a tease like that, I think you have to sign him to a full-time deal. With Jushin Liger, you know, he's getting up there. He's been around for decades. This was like a, a, a situation where you, you kick something off the bucket list, him wrestling a match in WWE. It's not like he's going to be a regular part of the WWE roster or anything like that. But with AJ Styles, he's, he's still fairly young. And, um, you know, fans have been wanting to see him get in there with the top WWE guys, you know, Seth Rollins and Daniel Bryan, if he, he's able to wrestle again. And um, even the top tier guys like John Cena and Triple H. I mean, there's tons of potential dream matches with AJ Styles. So if you bring him in, I think you need to bring him in full time and not just for a one off appearance. All right, this one comes from at Nick Easy. Should Christian be inducted into the Hall of Fame? Absolutely. Christian, along with Edge, they were one of the greatest tag teams in WWE history from any era. And Christian had a very successful career on his own as a singles wrestler. Um, he held the IC title. He also was world champion at one point. Um, I, I definitely feel he should go in, and I think he will go in. I, I think it's inevitable. It's not a matter of um, if it's going to happen, but when it's going to happen. And... Um, they even mentioned it on the Stone Cold podcast. I, I could definitely see it happening next year. If not next year, um, any time in the next couple of years, I, I think there's a, a decent possibility of Christian going in. So it's just a matter of when at this point, and I definitely feel he deserves it. All right, this one comes from Jake E. Hanna. Do you agree that Punk Jericho or Seamus Bryan should have main evented WrestleMania 28 instead of Cena Rock? No, because at WrestleMania 28, that was by far the big attraction. That was the dream match, John Cena versus The Rock. That match, they were building it as once in a lifetime, and it was something special. Uh, that was a match that fans had waited years to see. They spent a whole year building it up. That was clearly the main event of that WrestleMania. Um, it would have been nice for Punk and Jericho to have more of a high-profile match, and uh, I've talked about this before. I felt that their their rematch at um, the Extreme Rules pay-per-view the following month that was a better match than their WrestleMania match. Um, so I, I I was disappointed with that match, and obviously with Sheamus and Bryan, they could have gone out there and had a 20-minute match. Instead, they just uh, destroyed Daniel Bryan. But hey, look. It worked out for Daniel Bryan in the long run. Uh, the fans started chanting yes, and uh, WWE had no choice but to push the guy. All right, I got this question here from Ryan Bradbury. Hey, Aaron, who should, who should face The Rock at WrestleMania next year? Who should The Rock face at WrestleMania next year? Also, what would be your top three best matches for The Rock? Thanks. Well, with The Rock... Um, in terms of possible opponents for WrestleMania, I mean, right now it's not looking like Ronda Rousey is going to be involved in WrestleMania. Um, she's got a movie role right around that time. Um, but I, I could very well see The Rock getting back in the ring. Right now, it seems like Rock and Triple H is the match that people are speculating on. Um, when I think about possible matches for The Rock, I mean, Triple H and The Rock have never faced each other one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. Uh, so that would be interesting. Um, but I'd love to see The Rock versus Randy Orton, third generation star versus third generation star, um, or even The Rock versus Roman Reigns. But beyond those matches, I'm not sure uh, what else you can do with The Rock at this point. I guess you could do Rock versus Brock. Um, that that's also a possibility as well. Uh, as far as the top three best matches of The Rock, uh, there's just been so many of them. You could choose WrestleMania 17 with Austin. That's not my personal favorite. Um, I actually enjoyed the WrestleMania 19 match more. Uh, that's just my personal opinion on it, just because the the WrestleMania 19 match did not have the Austin heel turn. But overall, I thought 17 was a better match. Um, 
For my personal favorites, I liked the ladder match at SummerSlam 98, Rock vs. Triple H. I liked the halftime heat match with Mankind. And uh, I liked the match at SummerSlam 2002 with Brock Lesnar, where Rock passed the torch to Lesnar. Um, those would be my top three personal favorite Rock matches. All right, and I got this long question here, so uh, you know he put, actually put it in uh, one of those notepad files. I did not watch wrestling on, on a consistent basis in the 90s because I was born in 91. I do know most important moments in wrestling history, but I wanted to fill the gaps and see the events leading into them. Could you recommend a good starting point for me to start watching on the network? I'm currently watching the Monday Night Wars series. Thank you. Well, there's just so much content on the WWE Network. I personally enjoy watching shows in chronological order. I would watch The Clash of the Champions in chronological order. If you're looking for the most historical moments, you should just go with the WrestleMania, starting with WrestleMania 1 and work your way through it. And then uh, you could even do the big four pay-per-views. Um, if you really are dedicated and want to watch, watch the Saturday night's main event shows. Um, and as far as 90s wrestling goes, if you're watching stuff during the Monday Night Wars, um, you know, stick to the, the major shows, the pay-per-views. Um, you know, you can watch some of the Nitros, but there's just so many of them and so many Raw episodes. Um, the best way to, uh, to keep track on everything is to watch the pay-per-views. So uh, that, that's my recommendation. And check out my videos where I talk about the best WWE pay-per-views and the best WCW pay-per-views. They're on the YouTube channel, and uh, maybe that'll help you out. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks, as always, for watching. Subscribe, youtube.com slash nodqcaw if you haven't already. Stay tuned to nodq.com for the very latest regarding Night of Champions. We will have live coverage as always. And on that note, I will see you guys next time.